board will now come to order. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Alderman Troop. Alderwoman Flowers. Alderman Bosley. Alderman Moore. Alderwoman Hubbard. Alderwoman Triplett. Alderwoman Young. Alderman Conway. Alderman Ortman. Alderman Vollmer. Alderman Villa. Alderman Arnowitz. Alderman Wessels. Alderwoman Howard. Alderwoman Florida. Alderwoman Berenger. Alderman Rohde. Alderman Kennedy. Alderwoman Davis. Alderman Schmid. Alderman French. Alderman Boyd. Alderman Vaccaro. Alderman Ogilvy. Alderman Cohn. Alderman Williamson. Alderman Carter. Alderwoman Crewson. President Reed. Here. Alderwoman Flowers. Alderman Bosley. Alderman Moore. Alderman Conway. Alderman Vollmer. Alderwoman Florida. Alderman Rohde. Alderman Kennedy. Alderwoman Davis. Alderman Ogilvy. Alderman Cohn. Alderwoman Crewson. 20 present. Quorum being present, I ask everyone in the chambers and the galleries who's able to stand to please rise for prayer. Giving all honor to God, Almighty God, source of all authority, we humbly ask guidance in our deliberations and wisdom in our conclusions. Amen. Um, introduction of honor guests, any introduction of honor guests? I'm for the ninth. This way too, Mr. President. Yeah, there you go. I got you. I got you. Mr. President, members of the board, I'd like to have for my honor guests today Pam Ross and Ronnie Hour. All one from the 16th. Thank you, Mr. President and members of the board. I would like to have as my special guest today my constituent, Matt Devotee, my treasurer, and my neighbor. Any further introductions? Any further introductions? All the one from the six. Thank you, Mr. President and members of the board. I would like to have as my special honored guest, Mr. David Holmes, a resident of the sixth ward. He's also with Plumbers and Pipefitters, Local 562, and also Miss Lori Becker, who is with us today. All the one from the 14th. Well, I would also like to introduce Ms. Lori Becker. She was my campaign manager and former, former resident of the 14th Ward, and a warm welcome to her today at the Board of Aldermen. Thank you very much. Alderman from the 22nd. Good morning, Mr. President, members of the board. I'd like to have as my honor guest this morning, uh, Captain A. Pruitt and Percy Green with the firefighters. Also, we also have with us today Ernest Bradley, who, who has created the College Assurance uh, Society and really has done a good job working with kids and schools all throughout the city. He's, he dedicates a ton of his time to the public schools, so let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> all of them from the 10th like to wrap us up. Uh, thank you, Mr. President, members of the board. So wonderful to be here on January the 20th, which is National Penguin Awareness Day. In the spirit of that, I am proud to have as my guest, my favorite waddler, Mr. Fred Steffen. <laughs> Dispense with line item five, report of city officials. Report of city officials can be found in sections A, B, and C of the agenda and have been placed in all aldermen's mailboxes. Well, with dispense with line item seven, would anyone like to take any bills off of any of our informal calendars? Would anyone like to take any bills 
off of any of our informal calendars. We'll dispense with line items A through 10, first reading of board bills. Board Bill 251, sponsored by Alderwoman Berenger, an ordinance approving a blighting study and a redevelopment plan for the St. Louis Hills, Southampton, Lindenwood Park, Scattered Sites 1 redevelopment area containing a severability clause. Board Bill 252, sponsored by Alderman Moore, an ordinance repealing ordinance 69004, and in lieu thereof, enacting a new ordinance prohibiting the issuance of any package or drink liquor licenses for any currently non-licensed premises within the boundaries of the fourth ward contained an emergency clause. Board Bill 253 sponsored by Alderman Conway an ordinance renewing the garden side subdivision special business district containing a severability, effectiveness, and emergency clauses. Board Bill 254 sponsored by Alderman Conway an ordinance submitting to the qualified voters residing in the garden side subdivision special business district a proposal to renew and continue the levy tax on real property located in said district containing an emergency clause. Board Bill 255, sponsored by Alderman Ortman, an ordinance approving a blighting study and a redevelopment plan for 3337 Missouri area containing a severability clause. Board Bill 256, sponsored by Alderman Ortman, an ordinance approving a blighting study and a redevelopment plan for 3200 through 30. 22 Texas containing a severability clause. Board Bill 257, sponsored by Alderman Conway, an ordinance approving a blighting study and a redevelopment plan for 3867 through 71 Shenandoah and 2250 through 56 South 9th Street redevelopment area containing a severability clause. Board Bill 258, sponsored by Alderman Ogilvie, Alderman Cohn, and President Reed, an ordinance recommended by the City Planning Commission requiring residential and commercial bicycle parking under the zoning code for all new construction or renovations to e renovations equal to or in excess of $1 million containing definitions and administrative waiver provision and a severability clause. Board Bill 259, sponsored by Alderman Carter, an ordinance pertaining to secondhand dealers and pawn brokers containing a severability and emergency clause. That's the extent of our first reading. Reference to the committee. To the Housing Committee, Board Bills 251 and 258. To the Public Safety Committee, Board Bills 252 and 259. To the Ways and Means Committee, Board Bills 253 and 254. And to the Neighborhood Development Committee, Board Bills 255, 256, and 257. That's the extent of reference to committees. Second reading. The following Board Bills were reported out of the Housing Committee. Board Bill 214, Committee Substitute, sponsored by Alderman Wessels and ordinance recommended by the City Planning Commission pertaining to fees related to services provided for the zoning section of the building division of the Department of Public Safety repealing and amending portions of section 21 of ordinance 59979 including a severability and an emergency clause. Board Bill 226 sponsored by Alderwoman Triplett, an ordinance approving a blighting study and a redevelopment plan for 2309 Locust containing a severability clause. Board Bill 241 sponsored by Alderman Rohde, an ordinance recommended by the Planning Commission to change the zoning of property, change the zoning property as indicated on the district map from J Industrial District to H Area Commercial District in 5800 Highlands Plaza Drive and 1110 East Highlands Plaza Drive and containing an emergency clause. Board Bill 242 sponsored by Alderman Williamson, an ordinance recommended by the Planning Commission to change the zoning of property as indicated on a district map from B2 Family Dwelling District to C Multiple Family Dwelling District for 5501 through 51 Enright and 5534 Clemens containing an emergency clause. Following board bill was reported out of the Streets Committee. Board Bill 164 sponsored by Alderwoman Triplett and ordinance recommended by the Board of Public Service to conditionally vacate travel in the 20 foot wide North South Alley in City Block 1450 East as bounded by Halliday, Hom Compton, Pestalozzi, and Virginia. Board Bill 246, Committee Substitute, sponsored by Alderman Ogilvie, an ordinance pertaining to commercial semi-trailer -tra trucks prohibiting such traffic during certain hours along McCausland from the north boundary of Southwest to the south boundary of Wise, exempting from said prohibition emergency vehicles 
including privately owned tow trucks when providing emergency service to non-commercial vehicles and vehicles with a gross vehicle weight of less than 26,000 pounds and containing an emergency clause. Board Bill 248, sponsored by Alderwoman Young and ordinance recommended by the Board of Public Service to vacate travel on a 14-foot wide north-south alley in City Block 802, bounded by Shenandoah, 13th Street, Lamai, and Interstate 55. Board Bill 250, sponsored by Alderwoman Davis and ordinance recommended by the Board of Public Service to vacate travel in the remaining 15-foot wide east-west alley and the 22-foot wide north-south alley in City Block 896, bounded by Olive, 18th Street, Pine, and 19th Street. That's the extent of our second readings. With dispense with line item 14, perfection consent calendar. Board Bill 228, sponsored by Alderwoman Triplett, an ordinance authorizing the execution of a transportation project agreement between the city and 2118 Shoto Transportation Development District, containing a severability clause. That's the extent of perfection consent calendar. On the 13th, you recognize on the, on, the, on the motion for the perfection consent calendar. Thank you, Mr. President. Members of the board, I move for perfection of the aforementioned bill on the Mo consent calendar. Moved by all in front of the 13th, seconded by all in front of the 20th. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Dispense with line item 16, third reading consent calendar. Board Bill 225 and 236. 237. Alderman from the 13th, you recognize on the third read and final passage. Alderman from the 13th, you recognize on third reading consent calendar. Thank you, Mr. President. Members of the board, I move for third reading and final passage of the aforementioned bills on the consent calendar. Moved by the Alderman from the 13th, seconded by the Alderman from the 27th. Any discussion? Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Alderman True. Alderman Flowers. Alderman Bosley. Alderman Moore, Alderman Hubbard, Alderman Triplett, Alderman Young, Alderman Conway, Alderman Ortman, Alderman Vollmer, Alderman Villa, Alderman Arnowitz, Alderman Wessels, Alderman Howard, Alderwoman Florida, Alderwoman Barringer, Alderman Rohde, Alderman Kennedy, Alderwoman Davis, Alderman Schmidt, Alderman French, Alderman Boyd, Alderman Vaccaro, Alderman Ogilvie, Alderman Cohn, Alderman Williamson, Aye. Alderman Carter, Aye. Alderman Crewson, President Reed, Aye. Alderman Bosley, Aye. Alderman Moore, Alderman Conway, Alderwoman Florida, Alderwoman Davis, Alderman Cohn, Alderwoman Crewson, 23 aye votes. By your vote, you stay in the motion of the Alderman from 13th and 3rd read and final pass the aforementioned bills. We dispense with line item 18, report of enrollment. Board bills 225 and 237. All other business being suspended, the President shall in open session affix his signature here too to the end that these may become law. I move for adoption of a courtesy resolution calendar. I entertain a second on that motion. Seconded by the Alderman from the 12th. All in favor signify by saying aye. Opposed? Motion carries. First reading of resolutions. 
Resolution 294, sponsored by Alderman Conway, the Board of Aldermen directs the Ways and Means Committee to hold a public hearing to consider the continuation of the tax levy established in Ordinance 65508. Alderman from 23rd, you recognize on the first, re first reading of Resolution number 294. I would ask for unanimous consent of Resolution 294. Hearing no objection, Alderman, please proceed. I would like for, to move for final passage of Resolution 294. Moved by the Alderman from 23rd and take second on that motion. So, so, Alderman from the 13th, was that you that said second? No, that was. Somebody's whispering over. Alderman from, Alderman from, moved by the Alderman from the 23rd, quietly second by the Alderman from the 12th. From the, from the 12th. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. That's the extent of first reading of resolutions. Second reading. Following resolution was reported out of the Housing Committee, Resolution 260, sponsored by Alderman Villa Enterprise Zone for Integrity Integrity Elevator Company. Alderman from the 11th, you recognize on the second reading of resolution number 260. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, could you have the clerk repeat th that name for me? <laughs> we won't do no, that. I, I'm, I'm just kidding, Mr. President. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I move that board resolution number 260 be adopted. Uh, Mr. President, your committee on housing uh, voted this out uh, on Tuesday morning, and this well, provides. Well, I, I, let me get a second on the motion. It's moved by the Alderman from the 11th, seconded by the Alderman from the 12th. Alderman from the 11th, please proceed. Uh, resolution number 260 provides a 10 year tax abatement for Ital Grani, which is a, a, a major provider of wheat uh, for one of the world's largest pasta plants, which is located in the southeast corner of the city of St. Louis. Uh, this area is located in an enhanced enterprise zone and with our approval this morning, uh, their new $5 million construction will be granted uh, 10 years tax abatement. So I would move for the adoption of the resolution. It's been moved by the Alderman for the 11th, seconded by the Alderman for the 12th. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Resolution 267, sponsored by Alderwoman Young, Enterprise Zone for Stifle Bank and Trust at 501 North Broadway. All one from the seven. You recognize on the second reading of resolution number 267. Thank you, Mr. President. Members of the board, I move for adoption of resolution 267. Moved by the Alderman from the seventh, seconded by the Alderman from the 20th. All one, please proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This was again approved by the HUDS committee, and it provides 15 years of tax abatement to, in order to retain Stiefel Nicholas as, or Stiefel, I suppose they're called now, um, as a business in the city. They've been here since the 1800s, and it, they are a growing company nationwide. They're highly recognized, and there will be most likely 800 to 1,000 people working in that building along with the leasees there. So I think this is a great move for the city and a feather in our cap. All right, so thank I renew thank my motion. Thank you. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? It's been moved and seconded that we pass resolution number 267. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Resolution 274, sponsored by Alderwoman Flowers, Alderman Kennedy, and Alderman Schmidt. The Board of Aldermen supports House Resolution 1746, which would establish the Community Access Preservation Act and amend the Communications Act of 1934. All one from the second. You recognize on the second reading of resolution number 274. Yes, I move for adoption of resolution 274. It's moved by the Alderman from the second, second by the Alderman from the 22nd. All the one, please proceed. Yes, resolution 274 is a resolution that uh, in the House there is a Congresswoman, Congresswoman Bolden, that is uh, sponsoring House Resolution 1746. And what, and I have a copy on everyone's desk if you want to take a look at it. Uh, House Resolution 1746, what it does is, since the laws, state laws have changed for the franchises, uh, it basically superseded what we did here locally back in 2002 when we let the cable operating channels use our public right-of-ways in order to provide their customers with cable and TV and 
uh, phones. And what this bill basically does, this resolution does, that we're passing here at the Board of Alderman that I encourage you to pass, is to send a message to Congress and to our Missouri legislators that we, as a local government, we have basically lost control of our own public access, generally the people that are taping here today. Um, what this resolution will do will change it so that the money that we receive in franchise fees will not only be able to just be used for building and equipment, but also for operating expenses. As you know, uh, here, we're always looking for ways to fill our budget and fill in the gaps. And unfortunately, the communications divisions is probably one of the first divisions that's looked at uh, to try to fill in those gaps. What this will do will ensure that we'll possibly be able to get a 7% uh, franchise fee instead of five, so we'll increase it to 2%. We'll be able to use that money that we collect in franchise fees for operating expenses to ensure that we offer and have peg channels to our public. It also, as we have done many resolutions here last year and about the last year and a half, um, as you know, I'm not going to name any, any particular operating cable services, but our channels have been moved up to a higher tier. So we can no longer access government programs, all the programs that people want to see in libraries and schools and here at the Board of Aldermen, you have to now have a, a converter box, which is $5 a month. Now that's $60 a year, but to someone that is on a very tight budget and just doesn't have the income, cable becomes a luxury. That is not what we did down here at the Board of Aldermen back in 2002. We made sure that we had good customer service, that there was no degradation as far as people having to pay extra to uh, access public government channels. And as you know, a lot of my constituents probably complain to you as well, particularly our seniors who can't afford to pay that $5 a month are unable to see us today at the Board of Aldermen and everything that follows today on STL TV. Uh, also what this will do, that if this act, this uh, 1746 House resolution passes, within 180 days there has to be a study of all cable operations across Missouri to make sure that they are offering and making it not a barrier for our residents, for the public, to access public educational governmental channels. And I think that's important. Um, bear with me because I, the two chairpersons before me were very literate in this, so I'm really trying to get on board. And I appreciate them co-sponsoring this bill, and I'm sure they'll get up and speak. Like for instance, in Charlotte, uh, Century Link wants to charge our police departments and our fire departments for local access. That was not what we bargained for. Um, let me look at my news. This will also preserve funding so we can continue to provide the service to our residents. Basically, what we want to do is send a message to our Congress, to uh, Senator McCaskill, to Representative Lacey Clay, um, to Roy Blunt, and to Senator Carnahan that we support this act, that we want to make sure that our public has access to government educational channels. I don't see why we should not want to be transparent. I don't see why another issue is uh, in the digital cable world, the video cable world, it's hard for people that are visually impaired to be able to access public channels. If any of you have UVerse, which I do, and you want to access a public channel, it's a series of steps you have to go to. And there's actually a delay when you're doing so, which makes you think you're doing something wrong or something's not working. For someone that's visually impaired, it almost makes it impossible for them to be able to access it on their own, uh, which causes an undue burden. So I ask that you please support this resolution just to send the message that definitely Congress needs to set a fix to what is going on with our cable franchises. Again, this is not against any particular cable company. This is across the board, all across Missouri, all across the country. This is happening in many states. 
There are attorney generals that have filed suit to look into the acts and the things that have been going on with cable access. And back when I voted for uh, letting cable companies have the public right of way access to provide the service to customers, I didn't think we would get to this point. Almost it looks like they're trying to get rid of public access channels, which I think is actually a disservice to our residents. So I ask you and urge you, I know you've gotten many calls. Um, you may have spoke to a few people. And I know they have encouraged you not to vote for this resolution. But think of the people that a year and a half ago, when there was no indication they were getting ready to change the channel, and then there was another time they just changed it and we didn't know. We've been Channel City TV 10. We've been, now we have to stay to STL TV because we don't know when the channel's going to change. And we don't know what the number may be. But there have been a lot of things that have happened to our cable service that our people, now, you know, you may be able to afford a $200 cable bill to have all the wonderful channels and so forth. But the people that can't see us today discuss, discussing this because they couldn't afford that cable box when you get bootleg cable, you don't need a cable box. So why shouldn't a customer that's paying for their cable be able to access this channel, to see what we do down here at the Board of Aldermen, to see your neighborhood events being televised, to see themselves, to see what's going on in other neighborhoods. If you're not of English uh, language, there are all sorts of programs to help people learn about information and events in this city. And it's, it's a very helpful, informative um, channel to be able to have. So again, for our libraries, for our police departments, for our fire departments that's been getting this uh, service for 30 years, uh, for our schools, for here us at the Board of Alderman, any municipal buildings, for this to be taxed and for this to be taken away from us, I believe is a disservice to us. So I encourage you to support this resolution, to send the message to Congress, to support our congressmen that are trying to make that change where I believe the level of change needs to take place. And um, please support the resolution. Alderman um, from Twitter. Mr. President, members of the board, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I want to thank the Alderwoman from the second ward for taking this up once again. We've taken this up on a number of years, and it's been a while, frankly, since I've looked at the topic. Um, you know, when we don't name company names, it seems like we're lumping everybody together, and, and we're not doing that. Not all cable providers are created equal or unequal. So, uh, And there's enough sort of blame to go around. And I know that the resolution that's pending or the, the act that's pending in Congress is not going to take care of this. But I think there's a lot of folks out there who are not aware that our state legislature in our state, uh, as the alderman from the second indicated, took over essentially the regulatory um, operations of cable providers. And what that meant in reality for our folks who are out there, our constituents, is that the protections that were put in place by this board and by this city for them do not exist, the customer service provisions, and I know that there were a lot of them. It's my understanding from the alderman from the 18th that there were a lot of forward-thinking kind of provisions that are no longer there. All of that is expired, essentially. So in return for allowing them to use the, our rights of way, we had put some things in to make sure that our customers, our constituents were protected. Those protections are no longer there. When it says public access, the purpose is not to be able to say as a provider of that, that people still have access, the purpose is to say that they have public access, that it's easy, affordable, and it's there, not to say that they can hop over whatever obstacles are sort of there. And I, and I think the point uh, is well taken from the older woman from the second, that if your first language is Bosnian, if your first language is Spanish, if your first language is German, of course, we don't have a lot of German programming these days. But we did have a provision in the city of St. Louis, which I think is still there, that you have to advertise in a German-speaking publication for some of our advertising. 
We had provisions that you could flip to at STLTV and, and other places very easily to get ready access as you were learning the language through International Institute or elsewhere to get that kind of information the same way that we had at the turn of the century for Germans and Italians and everybody else that was there and it was accessible. And I don't want to diminish that at all. These are uh, our constituents along with everyone else who's interested in, in what occurs down here, what occurs throughout our neighborhoods. They're actively participating in that. I used to get calls from individuals about the fact that they had seen something that they didn't agree with or that they did agree with that happened down here at the Board of Aldermen. I don't get those calls, which suggests to me that people don't have that same access, that somehow they're being limited from that. Um, one of the other things in terms of the money availability, we all know that through the internet you can get live access, live access feed to the Board of Aldermen, but it's my understanding that that pipeline is limited because they don't have the funding to allow a whole lot of people to watch what's going on down here at the Board of Aldermen. So if they have, and I don't know what the numbers are, but if they have 2,000 people that at the same time are trying to have access to that, everyone's not going to have access to that. It's limited in some way. So funding is necessary for, for that all to occur. It's my understanding, and this was a testimony of the alderwoman from the second at the hearing, that she was out of town at a, a, a provision, uh, re, what was it, uh, municipal city something, and she was uh, getting more information about cities throughout this country and she wanted to tune in to what was going on down here at the Board of Aldermen and she couldn't do that because she didn't have that access. Shame on us as a country and as a city and as a state if we can't provide access to everyone in this day and age to what's going on here in the city of St. Louis, one of the greatest cities in this country. So I urge folks, this is not a bashing of any particular company. It's not a bashing of us. It's not a bashing of the state. It's saying, look, we have to do things to continue to assure throughout this whole country. It should be this whole world, but we don't have authority over that. But we want to we wanna get on board to tell our folks in Washington, D.C. that as a country, uniformly, we should be providing public access easily, without cost, to our people to have that information. Thank you. All right, thank you. We also have uh, Congressman Lacey Clay, who's joined us. Let's give him a round of applause. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Alderman from the 18th. Yes, Mr. President, members of the board, I too rise in support of this resolution and thank the alderwoman from the second for sponsoring this resolution. You know, in 2002, I was the sponsor of the renewal franchise bills that came through the city. Uh, they were really some very cutting edge bills. We required customer service requirements that uh, told a, that required the cable company to answer the phone within so many minutes. There were a number of really uh, cutting edge pieces to it. The basic idea is that when cable companies come to a city and ask for a franchise, they have to use the public right of ways to string their cable lines. Because of that, most municipalities have required uh, cable companies to have some kind of public access programming, uh, that as well as governmental programming. Typically, those types of programs are on the lower tiers of the channels because the lower tiers typically are the, the cheaper or the more easily accessed uh, packages that cable companies make available to people. The basic idea is that you would be able to access the public um, and educational, the public channels, the educational channels, and the governmental channels with the basic cable, the cheapest of the various tiers that you can purchase in the cable companies. Uh, with the deregulation, not deregulation, but when the regulation was changed to the state level, all of those type of requirements will in, were nullified. So at this point, a cable channel could, or a cable company could determine where they want to place in any portions of their spectrum, uh, the various channels related to public access, educational programming, and governmental programming. That means that now they can put them in channels that requires people to either have to buy a box or pay for it in the higher or the more expensive tiers. That was not the idea or the theory for the use of cable and the issuance of cable franchises when it first came up in the 1970s as a new communications technology. This idea is that 
you would be able to acquire various tiers of programming, some very cheap that would allow a person to access and see their government. And in, in the initial theory, you would even be able to respond back and forth by pushing a button on your, tele your television. All of that technology has not developed, but that was the theory behind cable. Uh, what this resolution, House Resolution 1746, is really just returns the spirit of the idea of cable and its usage back to its origins in requiring that the, um, the cable companies allow for this public uh, access channels in the way that it was originally envisioned. So I do thank the all women and I stand in support of this resolution. All right, thank you. Any further discussion? Alderman for the ninth. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to be added uh, as a co-sponsor and move that we embank it. Alderman from the 14th. Madam Clerk, please make note of that. Alderman from the ninth asked to be added as a added as a co-sponsor to Resolution 267. All along from the 14th. I would like to rise in support of this. As an uh, alderman that represents a uh, ward with a great deal of immigrant population, I think it's important. Um, some of you may or may not know that many times people learn their first, their second language by watching TV and listening to radio broadcasts. And I think it's important that they have public access to the, the government. Uh, many times, if it's not available on the cable channel on which they or cable company that which they subscribe, there there is no access. They're not aware of the fact they can get it on internet, and sometimes maybe that's not available to them either. So I think that we we are would be remiss in not not supporting this. And I appreciate Alderman Flowers' support of this, and I would like to be added as a co-sponsor to this bill also. Madam Thank Clark. you. Madam Clerk, please make note of that. Add the all the one from the 14th uh, as a co-sponsor to resolution number 274. So noted. Alderman from the 27th. Thank you, Mr. President. Please place me down as a co-sponsor of this resolution. Madam Clerk, please make note Thank of you. that. So Add noted. Alderman from the 27th as co-sponsor of resolution number 274. All the one from the 19th. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to also be listed as a co-sponsor of this bill. Thank you. Uh, Madam, Madam Clerk, please make a note of that. Add all the one from the 19th as co-sponsor to resolution number 274. So noted. Any further discussion? Further discussion. All the one from the second, recognize close. Thank you. I just wanted to note that the only representatives that were at the hearing yesterday was AT&T, and I do appreciate them coming to speak. Uh, they have and are current on all their fran franchise fees. They did say they paid $800,000 last year. Uh, $100,000 of that was PEG fees, which we no longer are going to be able to collect as of last month. So that 2% increase will help out quite a bit. Um, I know my mother is watching, and I know when she uh, got you versed and I tried to teach her how to use the public access channel, it was quite challenging. And I'm not saying that because of her age or whatsoever, but she's just not a digitally educated person. But she's watching, and I want to say she is two weeks today free of smoking, so I want to congratulate her. Yeah. But um, think about all those, those senior citizens that want to be in the know, that want to know what's going on. They are one of our largest voting educated blocks of people and they want to be in the know and they want to know what goes on so think of your residents uh, I know Alderman Bozzi wants to add his name as a co-sponsor please and I encourage anyone else to uh, add and please encourage you to Make support the resolution Thank so you. noted oh um okay Um, I think Alderman asked for a bank. Yeah, the alderman from the alderman from the ninth said he'd like to make it in bank. Would you like to stand up and make a, an official motion? Yes, I move that we embank this resolution. Moved by the alderman for the ninth, seconded by the alderman from the twenty-second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion carries. Madam Clerk, please make note of that. So noted. Alderman from from the second. I just encourage you to support the resolution. 
All right, it's been moved and seconded to adopt resolution number 274. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. That's the extent of second reading of resolutions. Ms. Lane is unfinished business. We have none. Announcements. Next week on Thursday, Streets, Traffic, and Refuse Committee meeting at 11 a.m. in the Leisure Room. Next Friday, full board meeting, 10 a.m. in the Chambers. That's the extent of my announcements. Any further announcements? Any for Alderman from the 18th? Yes, Mr. President, I'd like to call a Transportation Committee meeting for next Thursday at 1 p.m. Madam Clerk, please make note of that. So noted. Any further announcements? Any further? Alderman from the 27th? Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, as a reminder to those individuals that live in the 27th Ward, we have our monthly ward meeting, 21st Saturday at 5939 Goodfellow, which is the Bishop Willie Ellis Center. Please plan on attending. All right, thank you. Any further announcements? Any further announcements? All the one from the second. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the board. I'd like to announce our ward meeting is Tuesday, uh, January the 24th at 6 p.m. at Nance Elementary School. It is our crime meeting. We will have the chief of police there, our uh, captain, Captain Mary Warnicke. We are trying to implement a model that has been in Lafayette Square and that has uh, multiplied across the city uh, to get people activated uh, into attending to crime and trying to combat those numbers. So again, that meeting is Tuesday, January 24th at 6 p.m. at Nance Elementary School in the cafeteria. All on for the 19th. Thank you, uh, I'd like to announce that this Saturday, Hamburger Mary's will be having their grand opening from 7 to 11 p.m. Uh, and for those of you who follow Kim Massey, she'll be there. So it'll be a great opportunity for you to see a new experience in St. Louis with how you are served a hamburger. Uh, so I'm looking forward to them. They're at, uh, I believe it's 3127 Olive. If you know where the loft is, it's directly across the street. If you know where Compton and Olive is, you can't miss it. The building is painted pink and purple. Uh, also, I'd like to uh, ask you if you have the time this Sunday to attend the Martin Luther King essay program that is sponsored by uh, uh, Anita Banks. She has been doing this program for a number of years at St. Alfonso Rock Church. The youth in our community are very active in this process. You'll hear some fabulous essays that will be um, spoken to us and talking about the history and the understanding of Dr. Martin Luther King, and that's at 3 p.m. at St. Alfonso Rock Church on Sunday. Thank you. All right, thank you. Any for Alderman from the 22nd? Thank you, Mr. President. Members of the board, I have two announcements. Announcement number one, 22nd Ward meeting next Thursday, 6 to 7.30, Friendly Temple Church, 15, I'm sorry, 5515 Martin Luther King Drive. Also, tax season is coming up. And the wonderful tax-free program is again being offered at Friendly Temple. It will start next Saturday, January the 28th, from 9 o'clock to 12 o'clock. If someone wants to call, they can contact Desmond Lee Long at 314-691-9500. This is a very successful program. It's not restricted by income. I encourage everyone to get their free tax service done. Save yourself some money. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Alderman from Third. Uh, Mr. President, members of the board, I'd like to announce that our regular war meeting will be this coming Tuesday, and I think that's the 25th, 6.30 at Clay Elementary School. We're going to be talking about the um, uh, caucus meetings that are going to be coming up pretty soon that would determine who would be candidates to and delegates for the presidential elections that will be coming up here soon. All right. Thank you, Alderman. Alderman from 26. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the board. 26th of February, we will have our ward meeting at Union Memorial Church at 6.30, so we encourage all the residents of the 26th Ward to come out for information. Thank you. All right, thank you. Alderman from the 22nd. I want to make sure if I, I was clear. I'm not sure if I said uh, where the site is. The tax service is going to start. It's going to be at Friendly Temple, 5515 Martin Luther King Drive. Again, from 9 to 12, starting next Saturday, going all the way to April 14th. So each Saturday from January the 28th through April the 14th. Thank you, Alderman. Any further announcements? Any further announcements? Alderman from 13, you recognize on the motion to excuse. Thank you, Mr. President. I move to excuse the alderman from the 4th, 8th, 15th, 25th, and 28th wards due to necessary absence. Moved by the alderman from 13th, seconded by the alderman from 12th. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. 
opposed, motion carries. All of them from 13, you recognize on the motion to adjourn. Thank you, Mr. President. I move to adjourn the meeting until Friday, 10 a.m., January 27th. Moved by all in front 13, and seconded by all in front 12th. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Opposed, we stand adjourned.